name is Anna, and I am a neurodiagnostic tech. I have been a tech for 10 years, and I perform EEG studies, and I have a background in nerve conduction studies as well. Um, nerve conduction studies are a little different than most neurodiagnostic studies that are performed. They test the peripheral nervous system versus the central nervous system. So you're really looking for the nerves from your fingers to your neck and your toes to your hips. Uh, there are studies that involve the facial nerves and some of the nerves in the back, but those are a little less common. One of the biggest studies that is done is probably carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, you test the nerves in the hands, and you can go clear up and test up to the shoulder for that. Uh, a typical day depends on how many physicians you work for. It could be eight hours. You could do nerve connections for four hours. Some techs do nerve connections all day, some techs do nerve connections just in the mornings. Uh, typical studies last anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour and a half. Just depends on the severity of the case that you're working with. The stress levels vary. Uh, depends on, again, how many physicians you work with and the stress levels with regards to if you're doing inpatient within a hospital or patients in an outpatient setting. Outpatients are typically less stressful simply because they don't have some of the complications that go with patients in the hospital. Um, it just, it, it varies. It's very much so a uh, less stressful neurodiagnostic job than surgical monitoring, evoke potentials, even EEGs and long-term monitoring. It's, it's pretty quick and easy testing as far as the technicians and the technologist side of things. You stim the nerves, you record the responses, and then you show the responses to the physicians and they perform the electromyogram or the EMG to get the full picture of what's going on with that patient and that patient's peripheral nervous system. What are some of the requirements for the job as a nerve connection tech? Most facilities, most organizations want experienced techs. However, the lack of specific training within some of the uh, neurodiagnostic schools unfortunately kind of prohibits that and hinders that. A lot of nerve connection studies or nerve connection techs are trained on the job. If you have a neurodiagnostic background, a lot of times you are, you are preferred but not necessary. There are techs that have chiropractic backgrounds, there are techs that have just basic, like CNA, LPN, basic healthcare knowledge. Uh, you're really just finding a specific location on that person's body and putting some electrical current to it and waiting for the response. And the physicians and the techs that you would be working with mostly are responsible for training you. I myself was trained on the job. I did not learn much about it in school and I learned a lot in the field and that's where you're going to get most of your experience. Uh, there are some organizations that work with nerve connection uh, programs as far as uh, lectures and workshops and that's the AAET and ASSET and they have websites. The AAET is aaet.info -E and ASSET is aset.org. Uh, there are some other organizations that you can link to through them and look for some of the different workshops and the different uh, classes that you can take through them. What are some of the best and worst parts of the job? I think honestly with any position in healthcare, some of the best parts are the parts where you can work with somebody and you can help them figure out just what their problem is, just what's going on with them, why they're hurting, why they're in pain, why they're sick. On the same, on the flip side of that coin would be you are there when the doctor tells them that they have a terrible disease or they have carpal tunnel syndrome or they need to go to surgery right away. Those are probably the most stressful times of being a nerve conduction tech. When the physician comes in and that patient doesn't have anybody there with them but you. And that's probably the hardest thing. The best thing is 
when you can give them a diagnosis, you can help them to figure out just what's going on and what they need to do to fix it, and then they leave and they're on their way and they're happy and they know what to do next and the physician gives them those answers based on the test that you did. So you have the knowledge of helping that person and you feel good about yourself because you did help that person. You did help to make their life a little better by knowing just what's going on with them. Some advice. Uh, the best advice would be job shadow. Honestly, that's going to give you a little bit of a taste of everything that you could do. The text that you would job shadow with would be great. A great knowledge source to know if you want to do surgery, like IOM monitoring, if you want to be in a long-term monitoring setting, if you want to do routine EEGs in patients and outpatients, if you want to do nerve conduction studies. Go to a doctor's office, ask the doctors what they think, what, you know, if they have nerve conduction studies in their office, if they use a tech, if they don't use a tech, some physicians don't. The best thing to do is to find an organization near you and ask if you can go, just shadow them, follow them around, ask them questions, realize that neurodiagnostics is not just EEG, it's not just nerve conductions, it's not just sleep studies, it's not just surgery, it's everything combined. And we really are a multi-modality program. We really do a little bit of everything. Knowing how the brain works and what it does, as well as the, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, you're not going to learn it just by looking at it at the program description online or in the course catalogs. You really need to go out and talk to the people that do it. I myself have been doing this for 10 years. Would I go back into this field? Definitely. Would I go back in without having job shadowed? No. Never. I would definitely go and talk to the people. And talk to people at big facilities as well as smaller facilities. You're not going to see the same things at a, at a small hospital as what you do as a, at a big hospital. A level 1 trauma center is not going to be the same as a level 4 hospital. Critical cases, heartbreaking versus just somebody who passed out. They don't really know why. It's, there is a big difference. Talk to the people that do the studies. Talk to the people that work in the field and they will be your best source of knowledge. They will be your best source to give advice on what we do. And I wish you luck.